Welcome back. You're still watching this week, and I'm Somna Sambo. And Nigeria's flooding in the past few weeks has led to a catastrophic humanitarian crisis with many coastal states flooded. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has visited flood ravaged communities in his home state of Bielsa, of Bielsa lamenting the destruction of lives and property caused by flooding. Jonathan, who visited his country home at Otoki in Ogbe, a local government area of Bielsa State, for an assessment tour, expressed sadness over the effects of flooding in the community and other areas. Uh, he had to use a canoe to arrive his palatial home, which was flooded beyond expectation. Uh, the situation is not different in several coastal states like Delta, Rivers, and many others. Well, to dissect the flooding challenge across Nigeria, including uh, the uh, coastal states of the country, is uh, Sonny Ofehe, who is a Netherlands-based uh, environmental rights activist whose activities have focused on the Niger Delta over the years. He's also a politician and governorship candidate of the Young Progressive Party in uh, Delta State. Thank you so much uh, you for, for joining us on the program. Thank now, you let's take me. a critical look at these issues of flooding and why despite the fact that flooding has been occurring in several Niger Delta states over the years, the governments there haven't been able to work with the federal government to do more. Uh, Governor of uh, uh, Delta State, Ifan Yokowa, had uh, about two weeks ago been saying that the federal government should desil some of the rivers, especially River Niger, and then of course build more dams. What are the solutions uh, can you proffer? Because I know you've gone to some of these areas affected too. Yeah, well, um, if you look at the situation, water don't just flood without giving information. First and foremost, we must look at the agencies that are saddled with the responsibility to predict our weather and to tell us the nature of uh, the, the rising nature of our waters. And of course, we live in a time where the climate change is also a problem, and then also the water levels are rising. So uh, responsible governments are looking at ways with which they can deal with water. I live in the Netherlands, and the Netherlands are the best water flood management country in the world today. And yeah, the land, and yes, what happened was that in 1953, they had a, the, they had a terrible uh, flood situation from the North Sea, and then they said, well, they came together and they said, never again will this happen to us. So they started building dikes, and they started using... Uh, um, they started building uh, sea walls to protect their walls. And today, do not forget also that uh, the Netherlands is a low, 22 feet below sea level. And so we've been able to manage water to the level where we don't see flooding. And that is a responsible government that takes the people into consideration. If you travel around, around like if you cross the Patani Bridge during the dry season, you will That's see in Delta that. State. Yes, in Delta State, you will see that. Um, the, 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 there are no proper drainage uh, dredging system, so the water level, the, the, the sea are filled with water to the top level. So when there is even a rainfall, you know, there's no passage for the rain to, to, to move. And what the Dutch have also done in this way is, that is to create artificial canals. And then this has also helped the agricultural process because they now build uh, re the yes, water yes, and irrigations. Build, uh, so irrigation waters are basically channels. passing through household farmers and all that they can assess it. Because if you stop the flow of water, you provoke water to come back and fight you. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a government that is not doing all of this, then you begin to ask yourself the question, what is causing all of this problem? You just said Okowa is blaming the federal government. But the question now is that there is no better time for such situation to happen than now that we're in a political process where debate should be, I mean, the question should be on who becomes the president, who becomes the, the governor, 2023. Even senators and House of yes, are not left yes, out, yes, I mean, I mean, including state so houses of assembly members. this is a state of members. national, I mean, it calls for national uh, discourse where even the national assembly is supposed to reconvene specially and bring in the agencies and ask them questions. How did we get to this level where we are today? And now we're basically looking at nature to see when the water will take itself backward. And do not forget the economic damage the thing is also causing. We've basically cut out our east and west connection because the roads are flooded. Yeah, the east west are flooded. Which links, yes, yes, yes. Uh, most so, of the states in the Niger Delta I mean, Definitely. Uh, so I was thinking flooded. that by now we should have had some government officials traveling to the Netherlands 
to start discussing with experts in this field on how we can deal with this situation. Even in Delta States, River Ethiopia is reputed to be the African uh, deepest, deepest uh, yes. uh, inland waterway. Mm -hmm. And this can be used for tourism, for other purposes. So we need to first of all go down to the drawing board, look at our problems. Uh, a few, uh, I think about a month ago, I was flying over, I was flying to Asaba. I saw the River Niger, it was completely dry. You know, in that situation, you would definitely have flooding situation occurring in all of those places. So the question now is, how do we move forward? I visited a few days ago, I visited one of the ID, IDP camps. Yeah, I mean, I saw you from a video yes. you had sent earlier, you know, going, uh, you know, commiserating with those who have yes, uh, yes, lost yes. their families. But in all of this, what are the solutions so that we don't talk more about the problem? People need to know what to do so that next year, mm. when the rains come again, they are better prepared. Once I become the governor of Delta State come 2023, we will begin to find a permanent solution to this problem because is I'm already it, well, discussing with <laughs> Apart from uh, being gonna, political gonna, about it, no. is it a, a state problem? Because this it is, is a, a countrywide problem that the government has been saying that starting even from Cameroon mm, yes. through the Lagdo Dam opening yes. and all of that. Because and we then, are the last end of the Atlantic Yeah, the southern ocean. part yes, of the country. Yes, yes. So when you don't have your dikes, you don't have, what stops us from building dikes? We're not can the, state governments we, afford building dikes? No, you can, you can go to international agencies. This is something that falls within the Sustainable Development Goal project. So if you can bring some counterpart funding, there are many international, uh, international agencies that can come to your rescue. For instance, we have IDP camps in the northwest of northeast of this country, funded by the United Nations. So, what are the government doing? What kind of collaboration are you seeking? We have a university in the two universities in the Netherlands that can bring practical solutions to the problem. Are you engaging them? First of all, you need to engage them. And when you engage them, when it comes to the issue of the funding, then you begin to use your capacity to look for the relevant agencies that can help you to deal with this issue. Do not forget that it is even the poor people that are even being affected. And where they have been kept now is an ISO. It does not even meet national standard, let alone international yeah. standard. Of, I, I, I mean, of you could have seen an example, sorry to just cut in there, yeah. of former President Goodluck Jonathan yeah, climbing. I mean, he was on the, the Keno trying yeah. to get to his house. This is the second time it's happening. The last time it happened in 2012, Goodluck Jonathan was still the president of the country. Is it that he didn't anticipate that such a thing will repeat itself? Wasn't anything actually done? I mean, th those are the pictures. That's him. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see him right, right there. Is it that the government didn't learn more from that experience? And we're ha having this hap uh, happening again. What should states and the federal government be doing to prevent such a situation again? You see, um, when it happened the first time, I think around 2012, there about, yes, yes. you know, there were damages. We waited naturally for the water to recede back to the sea. And then it occurred again now. And then we are waiting again for the water to recede back to the sea. Do not forget that water comes in once and then retreat, comes in the second time, retreats. The next one that will hit us might be in the form of a tsunami which will not only flood people's home, but take the homes well, along its We don't have records we of tsunamis in, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> in well, this part well, of the world. Yes, but the thing is, we need to put in a, practicable, a practical solution to this very issue. Because if you don't find a, a solution to this problem, then your construct the construction of your roads is wasted. Your agricultural uh, policies are going to be affected because when we face this kind of situation again next year, it's going to sweep our roads, it's going to sweep our agricultural produce, it's going to sweep everything along this path. So that is why the ecological challenge we currently face is paramount and it should be in the front burner of any campaign discussion i mean from people like you in the media you know you should put it before people who want to occupy public offices come 2023 what yes are yes you have just raised something yes. very important and i want to take you back to your home state of delta state governor if okowa is one that is said to have done very well in the issues of uh, areas of flood control and all of that uh, based on what you have seen what's your assessment uh, 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 as an activist and now you are a politician are you seeing things from a different perspective now that you probably, have joined politics? Probably we're seeing than, the situation. Uh, where, than when you were an activist. You no, know, I still see it as an activist. Probably we're seeing it from different binoculars. Because what I see, when there is even a five centimeter rainfall in Asaba, the whole place is flooded. Traffic is, is completely stopped. There is no means of moving around and all of that. So 
the situation has not uh, um, been tackled properly. I Despite think the it, investment of the government yes, in yes, drainage controls, yes, flood yes. control, well, and We all don't of even that. see those drainage properly. Because if we do see this drainage properly, Asaba is not even supposed to be flooded when you have just a rainfall. Because we can be able to line up drainage, you know, that can lead the water to the river Niger. Then it comes down to the issue of dredging again. You need to dredge. You need to dredge at least a minimum of, you know, 10, 10 draft, you know, feet down. You know, you need to dredge. You need to allow the water to flow. You need to allow them to go. At, then you, you prepare the tributaries. That's a federal function, I mean. No, what about the tributaries? What about the waters within the state? that you can lead to. If you do that and you begin to face this challenge, then you have an evidence to show that the federal government is not cooperating with you in all of these issues. Uh, and what sort of solutions have you been offering? I mean, yes, you are yet to get into government, you're contesting to be a governorship candidate. What sort of solutions have you in the past, as an activist that's well-renowned, been doing to provide some of these solutions so that people can get some relief uh, before you come into office or even if you don't win, so that at least there's a bipartisan approach I am to a humanitarian crisis? Crisis, yes, yes. Uh, I've been talking with the Rotterdam municipality. I've been talking with a lot of multinational companies that are very much experienced when it comes to the issue of uh, uh, putting state-of-the-art anti-flood a mechanism in place. But the thing is, in Europe, when once it is not government, they're not ready to deal with, you know, private companies or because they feel that the, 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 the security issues in the country, the bureaucracy that is involved, the bureaucratic procedure involved in, in, in doing business in Nigeria are so cumbersome and complicated. So it discourages them from doing business. Now, the kind of persons they want to work with in Nigeria, irrespective of the security threats and all of the other challenges, somebody that they have a relationship with. And that relationship is what I have with majority of these international agencies, regional agencies, and even companies and uh, academics. Which you think you know, will be helpful? Yes, which will be helpful when I come into power. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so, and your chances are also another thing, because you're actually in, the, in what some people will call a fringe party, okay. the YPP. What, I well. mean, what are the chances of a YPP in Delta State, for example, uh, well, uh, that will make people want to you know, take well, seriously your ambition? A lot, of, a lot of things have changed in 2023. The Electoral Act is there to protect some of, to cover some of those loopholes of malpractices that used to occur in, in the past. And then people are beginning to wake up and, and feel that their vote will count in 2023. I just did a one-week run around of Delta State. I saw the enthusiasm Amidst in the people. Amidst the flood? Yes. Wow. I, I just did that, and I saw the enthusiasm in the people to want to see a change in their government. So what is about to hit Delta State politics will, will shock even the political bookmakers. I cannot guarantee well, you it's, that. it's left for the electorate to decide. But back to the issues of flooding now. How could a whole state like Bielsa State be submerged? I mean, you can see the visuals that come in, large swaths of land being swallowed by water, people living practically for weeks now on top of this water. Even the former president, uh, good luck Jonathan, his mansion completely swamped. Yeah. Uh, the east-west road cut off a whole state. Yeah. What do we do so that we no, have... Uh, just like uh, what we said it, about the country, Nigeria, being at the receiving end of the... So when countries open their dams, the water comes to us. So if we don't have a better protection system, then we get over flooded. If we don't give passage for those waters to move, so then we the get flooded. So the coastal states are coastal paying state And Bayelsa is just on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. So they are at the receiving end. So they will be most affected with this flood situation. Then the questions still come. Like, as a government, you should have seen in this coming. You should have known something about this. So if the federal government is not cooperating with you in trying to deal with this situation, then take your initiative, take your steps, and come out in the open. Speak it out. This is what I expected any decent government who have regard for, his, so for, for the lives of its citizens to have been doing before now. And none of them is doing it. And we are still not doing it. We are currently debating on who is So, so uh, there's so much talk about politics rather than actions. With the, yes, we're not dealing with the issue that affects our corporate existence. And apart from that, the economic damage, the toll that it has on our economy is even 
killing at this moment where we are even struggling to survive. So if what about if it takes one year for the water to recede? Are we going to live like that? I mean, a journey from here to Benin, to Benin that used to be like five, six hours, people spend two days on the road. And heavy-duty trucks are even compounding the situation even the more. So this is where we are. And nobody is talking about uh, it. As an opposition sad. politician, uh, what do you think uh, the federal government ought to have done itself that it hasn't done? Because building of dams can be very expensive. We see what's going on in uh, Zungeru, Kashimbila, that the government is actually doing. But others are still calling for more dams. They should work with state governments and all of that. How do you think that, you know, as we get into the election next year, people can, you know, hold politicians to account and say, okay, tell us what you are going to do in concrete terms, both at the federal and state levels on how we can prevent this from happening in the next five or ten years. You must look at your institutions. The institutions that are saddled with the responsibility to control all of this flooding situation we have today, you must strengthen them. You must ensure that people with the technical know-how are appointed to take those responsibilities. And also, you must ensure that they are properly funded and their actions are transparent. Once you build that institution, then you can begin to look for international partners with the technical know-how to come and help you deal with the situation. The solution is around the corner. The solution is out there for people to see. But the question is, do they even understand the, the, the complication, the effect? And uh, because it does not affect the big men who live here in Abuja, uh, it affects the poor people who live in the, in, in the, in the, in the shore, shoreline areas. That is why probably we're not taking it serious. Yeah, but the big men are also beginning to pay for it. Some of the, because in terms uh, the, of the, some of the houses they built in their home, home, uh, in their, their country probably, homes and all of that are being flooded. Probably and, and they have money and they have uh, their <laughs> friends who will give them money back to replace it. But what mm -hmm. about the people who don't have those opportunities? That is what we should be thinking about. Uh, climate change cannot be blamed on what is happening now in Nigeria because in the last 20 years our rainfall and all of other uh, geographical issues have not changed dramatically for mm -hmm. us to say this is the cause of the problem. What we have now is a man-made problem. Yeah, but the government officials are also using climate change as an excuse. That's why, but it's not. This, this case of flooding in Nigeria has nothing to do with climate change at all, even though we understand that climate change could, would have impacted the, the level of water rising up. But what we have now is a man-made problem, is a failure in government, institutional failure, and until all of that is corrected, moving forward into 2023, we will experience this same thing again by September, October of 2023. And only God knows the extent of damage that would have caused to the damage that we already have right now. Well, people are becoming very poor by the day because of this. And of course, a lot of lives are being lost, yeah. over 600 at the moment. As we try to round off this conversation, Sonny Ofehe, you have been in the Netherlands and we've seen this uh, environmental degradation going on in the Niger Delta and some groups, including you fighting for the rights of people in the Niger Delta, you know, taking companies like Shell to court and all of that. What's been the update on all those struggles and all of that? Is that the reason why you're getting to politics yes, now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, After, yeah. you know, fighting the IOCs for a long period no, of time. Well, we, we recently the pipeline issues have been in the news that uh, they've, there's been diversion of crude and all yeah. of that. So whatever is coming out now is not a surprise to us. At International Fora, we've always told the oil companies that it's a shame that Nigeria is the only OPEC member that do not have a metering system. They do not know how much of crude oil is it that we is don't produced. have, or the IOCs control the metering uh, system. We well, they say we don't <laughs> have. So we're, therefore, it is the IOCs that tells the federal government what is produced on a daily basis, and then also we don't have the means to even keep our excess crude that is not being sold. So everything has to leave. On a daily, they come to Rotterdam and they stay there. Demorage are paid here and there. But we've told them that if you truly and genuinely know and you want a solution to this uh, uh, oil illegal oil bunkering situation, you know, losing a hundred thousand barrels of crude oil per day, running into billions of dollars annually, then you should mark your crude. You should mark your crude. Like, for instance, in the European countries, if there's an oil spill on the North Sea, 
just by the mere coloration of the oil spill, you can know if the oil is, if the crude is coming from Norway. So mark your crude so that when you mark your crude, you separate the legitimate OPEC. Uh, and when you say quota. mark your crude, what, what color, do you, you mean? You color them. Okay, color them. Yes, oh, you color there's them. a system of coloring yes, coloration. the crude oil. Yes. Oh, interesting. You, you color them so that if you say, okay, well, our national color is green, white, green, you can say, okay, Nigerian crude is green. So when they get to their destination, the coloration is taken out of the crude. So with that, you can be able to legitimately, you know, identify the OPEC quota from the so-called stolen crude that people are flooding in the international market. So okay. uh, that is one solution on its own. And until we have this, this ability, and of course, why will your pipeline be even running above the ground? In the 21st century, they're supposed well, to be better. <laughs> these are things I will hope you to know? investigate. So <laughs> and I just hope that as you're trying to get into politics and into government, if you do uh, find your way into government, you'll be able to, you know, help in realizing some of these policy decisions yes. because it has to boil down to policies. Yeah. And uh, how much reaching out are you doing to party members and all of that to oh, help them understand these issues? Our, we're, we're doing our best. Oh, okay. uh, we're, we're, we're educating the people on mm. what they should be looking out for in the next uh, coming days months leading up to the elections. All right. We must thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much Ofe for He is uh, uh, an environmental rights activist yeah. who is uh, uh, an expert in the environment and, of course, he's also getting into politics right now to contest for uh, the governorship of uh, Delta State. Thank we can you. only wish you well as thank you try you, uh, to cut your teeth in governance. Uh, thank thank uh, th That's how it's been for uh, this edition of this week. Uh, we must thank you for watching and... Uh, Thank you so much for being on the show. Well, remember to show kindness to victims of flooding near you. And of course, you know that if you do want us to have any videos of you facing this challenge, you can also send them to Arise News. Must thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, I'm Somna Sambo. See you next week.